Game Boy Advance SP is the second iteration of the Advance line of Game Boy consoles. This version introduced a new clamshell form factor which gave it a smaller overall footprint. I've never owned a Game Boy Advance SP before this one, so I'm very excited to take a closer look into this console. So with that, join me as we attempt to renew the gaming experience on this tired and old Game Boy Advance SP AGS-001. My name is Tito and welcome to another episode of Retro Renew. Today we're going to give this old Game Boy Advance SP AGS-001 a complete makeover. We're going to replace the scratched and dinged up shell and also replace its frontlet screen. So if this is your first time watching this channel and you're interested in repairing, restoring, or modifying retro game consoles, please consider subscribing and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you don't miss an episode. So I never actually owned a Game Boy Advance SP, and my first impression of this AGS-001 model is that the screen lives quite a bit to be desired. It's pretty dim, and the front lit screen isn't really doing the console any favors, and that LCD screen has definitely got to go. But regardless of that fact, I'm actually really happy to have this Game Boy Advance SP, and now I'm just excited to see how we can improve it while gaming on an AGS-001 console. So for this build, we're going to be using a Funny Playing IPS kit, as well as a pre-trimmed Game Boy Advance SP shell, both of which are from Retromodding. I think it's going to really be awesome and really breathe new life into this tired and old Game Boy Advance SP. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to complete this mod, going through all the required steps, as well as some of the optional ones, the components needed, as well as a price breakdown, and lastly, an overview of the final result and my overall opinion of the build. All right, with all that out of the way, let's get right into it. To do this mod, you're gonna need the following items. Please feel free to pause the screen so you can take note of them. Okay, once you've gathered all your tools and parts, we can start the modification. All right, to get started, make sure you have all the components you need. Here we have the pre-trimmed shell from Retromodding. the IPS kit, also from Retromodding, and lastly, the uh, Game Boy Advance SP that we will be modifying. This is an import AGS-001. So to start off with, we're gonna remove the battery cover, and then we'll take out the battery. It looks like they put in an aftermarket uh, battery for this which is fine, works just great. Set it aside. All right, now we're gonna remove the four tri-wing screws in each of the corners. Hey, you'll notice that this console's pretty scratched up, so it is nice that we're gonna be replacing the shell. The last one. And now we're going to remove uh, the two additional tri wing screws, one by the cartridge slot. And the last one is in the battery compartment at the bottom right there. So go ahead and remove that. All right, and actually, you can see here the water damage indicator is uh, in perfect condition, so there was no water damage. Remove the rear shell housing and set it aside. And if we look at the PCB, it's actually pretty dirty, so we're gonna give that a good clean once we remove it. You can see all the dust there right by the volume slider. So we're gonna remove these three Phillips screws. Thank you. 
and you'll see right here that actually the water damage indicator is also uh, pretty good in pretty good condition so we're gonna lift the PCB here and be careful because we got to detach the ribbon cable so be sure to disconnect it sliding the tabs up and then it should remove the ribbon cable and now we have our PCB so now here we're going to remove the uh, hinges for the Game Boy Advance SP because we're going to need to reuse these for the aftermarket shell so just kind of you know apply a little bit of pressure and um, it should sort of uh, dislodge it from the hinge and then we're gonna have to open the console to get them out the rest of the way and go ahead and uh, push them out you'll see that they'll come up fairly easily all right the other side Great. So now we're going to actually remove the covers for the hinges because we have um, white ones that will match our aftermarket shell. So you can see these just slide right out and be careful not to lose them like I almost did right there and uh, set everything aside. So now I'm just going to set down a towel so we can go ahead and clean the PCB. Um, I'm going to be using some isopropyl alcohol and a toothbrush uh, to accomplish this. So spray a little on the brush and a little on the PCB and just give it a good scrub, you know, get some of the dust off. So once that's clean, you know, we can pat dry it with a microfiber cloth. All right, and here we're going to begin to install the IPS panel into the aftermarket shell. So grab your kit and I'm going to show all the parts here. We got the panel right there, we got some foam tape and the ribbon cable. So here um, you'll see there's a little pad, soldering pad on the ribbon cable. Um, we're gonna solder a wire to that, so I'm just gonna tape it down here to keep it in place. Um, but we're gonna solder a wire to that and then the wire will be soldered onto a specific point on the PCB and this will enable us the ability to um, adjust the brightness on the on the new IPS panel. So we're going to go ahead and apply some solder and solder the wire. All right, make sure it's attached. So we're good. All right, so we're going to grab the LCD housing, peel the protective film from the IPS panel and just lay it into the LCD housing as shown and what we're going to do next um, well here actually I'm going to put the, um, the protective film back on so we uh, can protect the LCD from any scratches and debris we got some double-sided tape I'm going to apply it um, to the ribbon cable and but before we actually place it let's make sure we put the brick connector onto onto the, the ribbon cable and then we're going to apply the ribbon cable to the lcd panel as shown right there and then we're going to twist the ribbon cable um, appropriately so that it uh, fits once we close the enclosure all right and we have an almost fully assembled top half of the game boy advance sp so I just put the scissors there to keep everything together while I get um, all the screws. And uh, make sure you organize the screws um, so you know you know which ones go where because you don't want to mix up the locations because you could have the screw protrude through and break the plastic. And we definitely don't want that. So go ahead and screw together the LCD housing enclosure. These are five Phillips head screws.
All right, once that's done, we're gonna attempt to attach the top part of the console to the bottom. So we're gonna feed the ribbon cable through to the bottom lower housing, like so, okay. We're gonna put the hinges on. So make sure we put the, the covers on the hinge. They just slide right on. And actually my covers um, had some plastic burrs, which we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna file so it's nice and smooth and so that it fits into the hinge of the Game Boy Advanced SP. So here you can see I have my file and I'm just gonna file down those burrs. They're kind of hard to see. Um, but yeah, so just to make sure we have a nice smooth surface so that these hinges slide right in. All right, so basically um, there is a key for the hinges, so they only go kind of in one direction and we're just gonna set them in initially and lightly press them in. They won't go in all the way until you open the lid. So once the console is completely open, you can press them in fully and now we're good. Now we're gonna put the ribbon cable cover on. And remember that is a single Phillips screw. Make sure you are putting the correct one in. Okay. Give it a quick test. Looks like the hinges are working well. Great. All right, so now what we're gonna to attempt to do is we're gonna to attempt to solder the brightness wire onto the soldering pad labeled Q12B. So we're gonna add a little bit of flux. Then we're gonna add a little bit of solder and pre-tin the pad so that it's easy to solder the wire. So hold the wire close. I should have cut a longer piece of wire um, this is the, the wire that actually came with the kit. I found it to be a little bit too short. Um, I would probably cut a piece of magnet wire about uh, maybe six inches so you have some slack. And that'll make attaching the ribbon cable to the PCB a lot easier. Because I had a little bit of difficulty doing this um, because there wasn't enough slack for that brightness wire. But uh, go ahead and lock the ribbon cable in place and uh, make sure all your buttons and membranes are into are in the Game Boy Advance shell housing before we install the um, the PCB and the speaker as well. All right, so now we're gonna attach the PCB to the Game Boy Advance shell using the three Phillips screws. And now we're gonna put the uh, nut for the screw which closes the battery compartment door that just press fits right in as you can see right there so make sure you don't forget that otherwise you won't be able to close your battery door and then place your power switch in, into the shell and then we can lower the rear shell housing onto the console make sure everything is aligned and we should be ready to screw everything in place so we're going to start with the tri-wing screw right at the cartridge slot now we're going to put the tri-wing screw in the battery compartment, followed by the four tri-wing screws in each of the four corners. Now we can put the battery in place. And then the battery cover. And we'll screw that in place with a Phillips bit. All right, let's give it a quick test here. Awesome, everything seems to be working, the volume is working, and the brightness is working. Great, so we have a working modded Game Boy Advance SP. Now we're just gonna put the finishing touches. To start, let's peel the protective film. And then we're gonna put the rubber covers on for the screws near the LCD panel. And then the Nintendo logo, of course, on the top of the clamshell. Um, this one actually looks pretty good.
Awesome, this is really starting to come together really nicely. And then we're gonna put, uh, lastly, the provided uh, label for the rear of the shell. And just make sure we get it nice and aligned. And this will really just kind of finish the console off. All right, that looks great. Awesome, I'm actually really happy with the shell. Um, I think retro modding has a pretty high quality product. Everything looks fantastic. I really like the pearl white. It has a really nice shine to it and everything seems to align pretty nicely. Now these shells aren't as good a quality as the OEM shells, but uh, as far as replacements go, the retro modding ones are pretty nice. And that screen looks absolutely amazing. The color is so vibrant and the screen is so bright. Everything just looks so sharp. It's, it's actually, this is my first IPS um, screen and I have to say it's quite a leap above the AGS 101 LCD panel. Um, I still really like those panels, but this is just something completely different. The quality is incredible. All right, so guys, I have to say, I'm actually really pleasantly surprised with the way this came out. I think it came out really, really well. I'm happy with the shell, the color, and most importantly, I'm very happy with this IPS kit. The Funny Playing IPS kit really just, it's hard to describe unless you see it in person. The colors just seem more vivid and vibrant, and the brightness is just incredible. It's, it's actually, I think, quite a bit brighter than the AGS 101. So I have my uh, modified Game Boy Advance original with the AGS 101 screen and just for comparison I'm going to show this in in some in some b-roll but that's the AGS 001 and this is the IPS screen so here even here in the normal brightness setting you can tell that there's actually um, quite a bit of difference this one is a little bit brighter but there's about two levels of additional brightness so as you can see here and, and really there's no comparison. Now, I don't know why you would want it this bright, maybe unless you're playing outside, but, uh, but yeah, this is, just, this is just a really, really good screen. Now, the charm of the AGS 101 LCD is the size of the pixels. The pixels are much larger. It's a lower density LCD screen, and, and really it kind of has more of that retro look. Now, you lose a little bit of that with the uh, IPS screen from Funny Playing, it uh, is a four times integer scale. So basically for every one pixel in the AGS 101, you got four pixels in the IPS kit from Funny Playing. And there's nothing wrong with that. This is a great kit and I think it gives you a very good gaming experience. So overall, I would highly recommend this mod. So let's go over price. Really to do this modification, you really just need one thing, and that's the IPS panel, especially if you already have a Game Boy Advance SP that you wanna modify. Now, if you want this modification to go much smoother and make your life a lot easier, I would highly recommend getting the retro modding pre-trimmed shell. That's just gonna make your life easier, and this essentially becomes a drop-in kit at that point. The pre-trimmed shell from retro modding costs about $25. Now, you can buy an aftermarket shell and trim it yourself, probably for $8, $8 to $10, but the precision trimming that Metro Modding does, they actually have a CNC machine that trims each of these shells to a very high tolerance. So, first thing, if you do want to do this mod, I do recommend getting the shell. Next, you're going to need the IPS kit. The IPS kit from Funny Playing, when I bought it through Retro Modding, cost me around $50. So right then and there, you're about $75 in if you want to do this mod. Now, if you're like me and you actually don't have a Game Boy Advance SP console, you're going to have to go ahead and buy one of those. So what I typically do is I go to eBay and I buy these consoles and as long as they work, I really don't care how the condition is because I'm just going to replace a shell anyway. So like I mentioned in my other video, uh, which highlighted a lot of the upcoming projects that I'll be doing, and there's a link to that video up there. I buy a lot of my consoles from Japan. They typically have better prices and a lot more options. Now, of course, this really only works for consoles that are region free, 
but thankfully the Game Boy Advance consoles are all region free. The Game Boy Pocket, the Game Boy Color, and the DMG Original, those are all region free, so you can basically buy your consoles somewhat on the cheap from Japan, have them imported, and modify to your heart's content. So aside from cost, there's really just a lot to like about this mod. I think the value is pretty good when you compare it to buying a decent condition AGS 101. If you were to go on eBay or Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace and you were trying to find an AGS 101 Game Boy Advance SP, they're gonna cost you a little bit north of $100. Another nice thing about this modification is that it doesn't require soldering. And, and I, I did the soldering because I wanted to have the ability to change the brightness of the LCD screen. But if you're happy, if you're happy with the brightness of this right now, and let me tell you, this is plenty bright. You don't need to do any soldering. Now, if you do want to have the ability to change the brightness on the LCD, you're going to need to solder one wire. And I'm actually very confident that a lot of you guys out there can probably, or anybody, guys or gals can actually do soldering. There's plenty of tutorials on YouTube and it's actually just a really good skill to have in general. So it's a very simple soldering job, just one wire, two contacts, and really that's it. So I have to say, I really like this mod. I really enjoyed it. I think it's fantastic. And if I had to do it over again, I think I definitely would. So I'm really curious to hear what you guys think about this mod. Leave a comment below and let me know. And if this is your first time on the channel and you really enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing. And as always, we'll see you next time.